This video is sponsored by Brookwell's Parts and Accessories, helping us to help you to keep your Land Rover in tip-top condition. Okay, hello and welcome back to the LRTV once again. And what we ha have here is a ring, as they call it, and you have a pinion that matches it, okay? It's a crown wheel, if you like, and this is always called a pinion. Pinion is the driver and the crown wheel is the driven. Before we uh, get our knickers in a twist, which I don't want to do, I'm only going to stick with a standard set for now. Once you've learned the basics, then it'll be easy to do more. Now I've noticed here there's a, a little bit of damage on this uh, crown wheel, on the tooth, and I'm not sure where it's come from. I think that'll be okay. Basically what you want to do is check to see your teeth wear. Make sure it's not abnormally worn. If it is, it needs to be dumped along with the pinion because they're matched. Pinion where the flange fits on, make sure your splines are okay. Yes, they can be damaged. If they are damaged, that wrecks the pinion. No good. You want your flange to be tight on there. Um, don't forget there's a lot of torque going through this. Okay, so um, just visually check, make sure that it's uh, not unusually damaged. Uh, basically, these actually do last a long time. We will have to talk about the difference in pinion heights because there are three different types and that will be in the next video because we have to do a uh, pinion height setting. Um, yeah, pinions come in all sort of uh, different configurations and it's mainly how you bolt the flange on. Um, here's the flanges that you can get. Basically these are standard Land Rover ones. Um, you can get replacement for them and we'll uh, explain that later. Basically what you're looking for is the condition of these. This one is a foobard because it looks like it could leak some seal so that will need replacing. Right, so I've gone ahead and uh, painted this uh, uh, final drive casing if you like. I don't know exactly what you want to call it. Some people call it a diff carrier which isn't quite right. Um, but basically I've got paint everywhere on it and uh, I actually dripped a bit of paint on the table and that also got where it shouldn't have done. So easy to get rid of the paint, it's just uh, using a scraper, okay. Uh, don't use sandpaper on uh, mating surfaces, basically because that scratches it to hell. Um, you could use the scotch bright and the bigger lamps obviously you can use um, a uh, very sharp blade like so, so that's not causing any damage. Um, it would be crazy to use an angle grinder, obviously, because that will take metal off. This surface uh, here, I've uh, got a little bit of paint on it. I just remove this and then uh, blow it out afterwards. I don't want anything stuck on here at all, as uh, it needs to be a machine fit together with the caps. Scotch Bright is absolutely brilliant for removing crap and uh, brightening up surfaces without leaving scratches in them or any considerably uh, noticeable scratches uh, along with these uh, flat wheels i had to clean the paint out of here this is mainly where the seals sit in and a bit further down i've not had to go right down to the bottom of these uh, where the bearings sit however if you get paint down there that needs to be uh, cleared out completely okay you can do that with a uh, blade something like that okay so flat wheels are easily available on eBay. Uh, right, so the pinion, we need to uh, put the bearings into the casing and we'll use the uh, main pinion bearing. I'll keep it in the packet for now. So basically, you're gonna use the original shims you took out, okay? In this case, they just had two of them. I've measured them and my son re-measured them. And basically, we wanna put a bearing cup or the bearing race in there. And uh, Land Rover have a uh, set tool. I mean, this basically is a bearing driver. I'm just making sure it fits and doesn't jam in the casing. And it will drive the bearing down. Okay. Now, this does have a handle. And uh, what I would advise is not to use impact. I'd prefer that it would be uh, done with a press at any point in time. Now, the handle is actually too weak. It tends to uh, buckle and uh, it's better to use a socket something very stout that's a 52 mil one okay i presume you've got a set like this of bearing uh, race drivers okay so you can see um, on this one 
Okay, that's pushed in home with the shims underneath it. All right, so uh, that's quite easy. 10 turn press. And then what we have here is the uh, other nose cone bearing, which is an easy fit. There's no shims underneath it. Okay, so once that one is in, it won't have to come out again. Whereas we might have to take the other one out yet. Um, you can see I've used this with a socket. Okay, and that's in nice and snug. So uh, we can forget about that one for now. Okay, so like I said, you don't use the handle on this. So basically, the uh, main pinion bearing um, that will uh, fit on the uh, pinion like so. And as you can see already, you have a problem unless you have a tube. Idea is to push the bearing race and do not push the cage. If the cage is damaged, that can cause all sorts of problems. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using a, uh, it's not a scaffold bar. This happened to be a washing line tube, a galvanized one. And you can see uh, it's not very thick, but uh, it's strong enough to push the bearing into place. Okay, so that's easily done. That's how that is done. Okay, so um, the other bearing. Okay, I've put the race in the, in the case already. However, this one is uh, quite a loose fit, so that's uh, no press needed on that. So the next thing to do is go ahead and fit the pinion. Now that you've got your bearing cups or your bearing races, whatever you want to call them, in uh, the, uh, diff, uh, the final drive casing, we can go ahead and uh, put the bearings in and then just nip them up. I am not at this moment going to lubricate it because we're not turning it, we're not rotating it to any great extent. Uh, so basically what I'll do is put the bearing in and then with these uh, flanges basically you have a spacer if you have a different type of flange uh, you don't have to worry about that uh, but basically I'll fit that and then I'll just bolt it up okay um, because we're not putting a uh, preload spacer underneath the uh, nose cone bearing that means that we're not going to be talking this up we're just nipping it up until we've got resistance on the flange okay so it feels a little bit stiff to turn the flange okay now that would be um, just pretending we've got a uh, preload at the moment it's just pulling the bearing down what we have to do now is we have to check the uh, head height on this or the pinion head height which we're going to do very very shortly but now I've shown you how the bearings are fitted that should be uh, good enough to crack on with that and I've left this one out for now the preload we will set later